gun smoke. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. Doggone it, Mr. Dillon. One of these here days, I'm just going to shake the dust of Dodge City off of my boots for good. Sure, I know it, Chester. How much you lose this time? Eleven dollars and twenty... Who said anything about losing? Well, every time you sit in on one of those draw games, the boys whipsaw you and you threaten to pull stakes and leave town. And one of these times, I'm going to do it, too. Sure, and the first thing you look for in the next town will be a draw poker table. Well, maybe I ought to change to stud or blackjack. <laughs> Maybe you ought to just keep your money in your pocket, you ever think of that? No, I, I, I got a hunch my luck is right on the point of turning, Mr. Dillon. Oh? No. Well, if I only had, say, $5 or so to get back into the game... No. I could be... Well, e- even if I only had a dollar... Oh, oh, Miss Kitty. Just one single dollar. You broke, Chester? Well, uh, Yes. There you go. Oh, no, no, no. I just couldn't think of taking money from a lady, Mr. Dillon. Oh, well, well, I'll take it. Well, except loan, maybe I could. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Dillon. I'll pay it back in just a few minutes, Mr. Dillon. You know, Kitty, you're a born soft touch. Oh, well, if he needs it, Miss. It's those sharps over there at the poker table that need it. Oh, well, he can't get hurt bad on one dollar. Uh, Chester's hurt bad when he loses ten cents. Yeah. Maybe he's lucky, Matt. Oh, uh, how so? Oh, uh, Forget it, Matt. Just one of those nights, I guess. No. Dad, would a drink help, maybe? Probably not. But I'll have one anyway. At least it won't do me any harm. Okay. Oh, well, I see the Marshal of Dodge is out carousing again. (laughs) Hello, Doc. How are you, Doc? Oh, my kitty, you look prettier in a basket full of sunflowers. Well, thank you. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. (laughs) Oh, say, Matt... You'll never guess who came to my office for help this afternoon. Uh, No, but they got my sympathy, Doc. Uh, It was old Carpus Digg. Carpus? Who's Carpus Digg? Well, he lives in a shack on the river bottom, Kitty. He hunts a little, traps some, keeps pretty much to himself. What's wrong with him, Doc? Nothing. He brought me a patient. Too late to do any good, of course. He died right on my operating table. Oh. Died of what? A bullet wound. You mean somebody was shot this afternoon and you didn't tell me about it? I didn't think it was important. Was the carpets, though. <laughs> yes. He looked mighty broken up when he left. Doc, will you please... I t- reckon a man living alone that way without any human friends can get pretty fond of an old hound dog. A dog? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess I did forget to mention it was that old spotted hound dog of his that was shot. <laughs> uh, how are you, Doc? Uh, <laughs> Miss Kitty? Uh, yeah, Chester. Uh, <laughs> Do you think maybe you can get by till payday for that dollar? <laughs> forget it, Chester. Yeah, yes, forget it, Chester. Uh, no, no, no use looking at me, Chester. Well, I was just thinking... Uh, Doc, you could... did Carpus have any idea who shot his dog? If he did, he wasn't saying. But from the look on his face when he walked out, I'm glad it wasn't me. Well, now, why would anybody do a thing like that? Well, I don't know. It's too bad, but there's nothing much to be done about it. I think maybe I better ride out there in the morning and have a talk with Carpus. What for? This wouldn't be the first time that a dog getting killed would finally lead to a man getting killed. Warning. Warning. Uh, 
What's the matter? Well, I have a warning for all eligible dependents seeking medical care at government expense from civilian sources. Well, so all right already. Be sure the physician and hospital are participating in the Medicare program before beginning treatment. Well, so my dependents have checked. Now what? They should make sure they use their ID card to obtain only that medical care to which they are entitled. Misuse of the ID card is punishable by a fine of up to $10,000 or imprisonment of up to five years. For a couple of aspirins? Don't take chances. Read the pamphlet, Dependence, Medical Care Program. Oh, no, that's what I call scare advertising. Looks deserted, Mr. Dillon. Maybe old Carper's gone off somewhere. And yeah, there's somebody cutting wood over there in the drawer. Let's leave our horses here in the lean-to, Chester. All right, sir. Man, it'd have to be a little ouchy to want to live out here all alone this way. Yeah, maybe it's not a matter of choice. Uh, no company except for a dog. No neighbors for ten mile or more. That's not quite that far. Pete Raymer's got a homestead about two miles north of here. It, maybe he shot that hound, Mr. Jones. Oh, why do you say that? Oh, I don't know. But folks mostly leave the old carpets to yourself. Yeah, I know. Hold it there. Right where you are. Mr. Jones. Take it easy, Chester. Who is it? Speak up there. It's Matt Dillon, Carpus, and Chester. Now, you better put that rifle down. Oh. Well, I didn't recognize you, Marshal. My eyes ain't what they used to be. I thought maybe it was... Well... You thought what? Well, I... I, I, I just didn't know. You mean you thought it might be whoever shot your dog, huh? Oh, Doc told you about that. I'm sorry to hear it, Cubs. I'd had Danny Boy 11 years, Marshal. He was going blind, pretty near bad as me. And he sure weren't no use to hunt with no more. Oh, but I'll say one thing, Marshal. I'd have given my right arm rather than lose that hound. I reckon folks should call it crazy, but that's how I felt. Well, living alone, I guess a man learns to appreciate it, dog. Well, he, he understood every word that was said to him, just as good as you or me. The evenings... We'd sit there in my shack, and I'd talk to him, and, well, we won't be doing that no more now. Who do you think shot him? Let's walk back up to the shack, Marshal. It's getting mighty cold standing here. All right. Here, look yonder. Here goes a rabbit. Look at that <laughs> fool run. He's sure scratching gravel. Danny Boyd's been after him like a shot. He'd have lost him right off, but he'd sure give it a try. Rabbits, coyotes, prairie chickens. He'd chase anything that moved. Blundering along, blind as a bat, baying his lungs out. Carpus, you have any idea why anybody want to shoot him? Because they're playing low down mean, that's why. Ain't no other reason for doing a thing like that. Well, come on inside. All right. Ain't nothing fancy, but it keeps the weather off. Have some coffee going here in a couple of minutes, Marshal, if you're mind to set a spell. Well, don't go to any bother on our account. No, no, it's no bother. Just get a few more logs in here. Uh, I ain't sure I can scare up three mugs, though. It's kind of unusual having callers here. Folks who always acted like I had the plague or something. Well, uh, people get caught up in their own troubles, I guess, Carvis, just... Get too busy sometimes to be neighborly. Yeah, yeah. Man can get lonesome, Marshal. Yeah, I know. Uh, Pete Raymer and his missus ever drop by here? No, never. Uh-huh. Where'd you find the dog after he'd been shot? 
I didn't find him. He found me. He come dragging himself back here to the cabin. I rushed him right into dock, but it was too late. And you don't know where it happened, then? Yes, I know. I followed his trail back this morning. It was on a brushy draw about a mile from here. Not toward the Raymer place? You no, know, more or less. I'll take care of it, Marshal. You just stay out of it. Laws for people and not for dumb animals. Your dog wasn't shot by a dumb animal, Carpus. I'll settle it in my own way. And you know who did it? Well, I know, all right. Now, see, they pay for it, too. That kind of paying for it gets out of hand sometimes. I'm the one that suffered the loss. It's my concern, not the Carpus, loss. Carpus, come out here. Somebody's out there in the yard. You hear me? Get out. Get out on the floor. Well, it seems like one of your neighbors has finally come calling on you, Carpus. <laughs> Another visit with Joe and Daphne Forsythe. Joe. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm up. I'm up. I forget breakfast. I'll shave at work. Joe, it's not time to go to work. Then why'd you wake me up? You were snoring. How about that? You were snoring loud. Oh, really? I just wanted to quiet you. I thought I was quiet. You sounded like a buzzsaw going through a pine knot. Pretty good, pretty good. I wish I could be with you at 2.30 in the morning. You can go back to sleep now. Oh, gee, thanks. You can get a good night's sleep, too. Our savings bonds will protect us. Huh? They protect us. The money we invest is used to protect our country and its freedoms. Why, all around us, we can see the safeguards that our bonds have paid for. How about that? So, you see, when you buy that savings bond with every paycheck, you're really investing in a secure night's sleep. Not in this house, I'm not. What? Good night, Daphne. Good night, Joe. out there, Marshal. You heard me, you mangy old weasel. Come on out here. He's aiming to kill me. But why? Well, I, I don't rightly know, but he fired a bullet through the window, didn't he? All right, Carpus, you stay away from the door. You too, Chester. Yes, sir. Raymer, it's Matt Dillon. You hold your fire. I'm coming out. I didn't know you was in there, Marshal. No, I guess you didn't. You understand, I, I wasn't aiming to shoot nobody. Is that so? No. Just trying to throw a scare into him. Into old Carpus, I mean. Bring him to his senses, maybe. Has he been out of his senses? Well, he sure act like it. Marshal, you know what he'd done this morning... He tried to shoot my kid's dog. Yeah. Snuck up through the brush, took a shot at her. Sonny, he seen him do it. Any idea what had caused him to do a thing like that? <laughs> Dang if I know. He's just crazy, I reckon. He always been to my touch. You know that. That's why folks around here just stay shy of him. Well, that might work both ways, Rimmer. How's that? Being lonesome, acting strange. They kind of go together sometimes. Yeah, maybe. Are you the one who shot his dog? What? If he says that, he's a liar. I ain't even seen that old hound for a week. Didn't know he was shot till you told me. Anybody says I done that is a liar. Well, I I say you done it, Raymer. You you calling me a liar? I'm calling you anything you are. Well, right. You stand there and listen to. 
Marshal, is that what he told you, that I killed his dog? No, he didn't tell me anything. He said he'd take care of it himself. Yes, and I will, too. That's what you was doing, sneaking and, around my place and, this morning. And I, for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, it's the law, the script. All right, right you just take warning for me right oh. now. I catch you around my place one more time, I'm going to put a bullet in you. Well, I ain't too bad to shot myself. You right better be a good I'll shot. You get All right, you shut up, both of you. Place. Shut up. Like I told you, Carpus, this way of paying for things comes high sometimes. Danny boy was the only thing I had in the world, Marshal. Well, then you ought to find out who killed him instead of coming I... around and scaring my kid after death. I know who killed Sonny him. Sonny come running home like, like, like old Scratch yourself was after him, yelling. He, it's Mr. Digg, he's yelling. He just took a shot at my dog. Oh, Carpus, if I could have got my hands on you. Wait a minute, right Rumor. Then... Wait a minute. Is that really what he said? I ain't known to be a liar, Marshal. The exact words, I mean. Well, that's the gospel, so huh? if lightning was to strike me dead, all right, right, all right, all right. right. I suppose we all ride over to your place, Remy. My place? Yeah. I want to talk to Sonny. What for? It might help to prevent a murder. <laughs> Kid, Marshal, right there, front of the barn. Sonny? Sonny? Yes, yeah, Pop? Come on over here a minute, Sonny, will you? Marshal wants to talk to you. Marshal? Yeah, come on. Here, here, Doc. Sonny, come back. He run into the barn, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. I can't figure what come over that boy, Marshal. I will soon find out. <laughs> Maybe it'd be better if you and Carpus stayed here with the horses, Raymond. You say so? Keep an eye on him, Chester. Don't let him get into an argument. All right, sir. Can't figure why Sonny's run into that barn. Anyway, just like you see the ghost. Don't figure why the marshal wants to Sonny! What do you want? I want to talk to you. I want you to open the door. You can't get away from a thing by hiding from it, Sonny. You go on away, Marshal. I got a gun in here. Oh? Uh, good, I'd like to see it. No. All right, Sonny, I'll give you just three seconds to open this door and I'll move. All right, Marshal. Go ahead and arrest me if you want to, but but please don't let Mr. Digg shoot Nellie. He won't. He tried to this morning. That's why I got her tied up here in the barn. Now, why do you suppose he did it, Sonny? Why did he get even? Because I... Well, I guess you know about it, don't you? Know about what? It was an accident, Marshal. Cross my heart it was. I was after an old coyote, and he ran into that brush patch. And I went in after him and seen something moving. I thought it was him, so I fired only it wasn't. It was that old hound dog of Mr. Diggs. Oh. A man should never pull a trigger unless he's sure what he's got in his sights, son. Yes, sir, I know. Pop always told me that, but I just forgot. Now I have to go to jail and... Now, you stop that kind of talk. You're not going to jail. Hey, Carpus, come over here, will you? You too, Raymer. I was scared to tell what happened because I knew Pop would be mad and... I didn't think anyone believed me. What is it, Marshal? Carpus, it was the boy here who shot your dog. It was? I didn't mean to do it, Mr. Digg. I, I thought it was a coyote, but it was old Danny boy. Oh, I know how you like that old hound. I sure feel awful about it. Are you sure it was an accident? Y yes, sir, it was. Honest, it was. Well. Uh, Nellie's going to have pups in a couple of weeks, Mr. Digg. And I'll let you have your choice of the litter. Any one of them you want. Well, no. Uh, that hound of mine was a trained hunter, Sonny. Takes a lot of work to train a young pup. 
I'll help you. I'll come over every day as soon as my chores is done and help you train them. Well, that sounds like a pretty fair offer. This Nellie's a good dog, is she? She's the best dog in the world. You just take a look at her. Come on, I- I'll show you. Oh, uh, uh, I'm mighty sorry about this, Carpus. Yeah, that, that's all right. He couldn't be helped. Come on, Mr. Dick. Yeah, all right, Sonny. All right, I'm coming. Oh. Looks like old Carpus has finally got himself a friend, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Looks like two, though, Chester. Counting the pup. According to Thomas Jefferson... Equal justice to all men, regardless of their political or religious beliefs, is an essential principle of our political philosophy. The amendments to our Constitution spell out what we mean by justice. For example, no one can conduct an unreasonable search of our homes or businesses, or seize any of our belongings. We can't be held for a capital or infamous crime unless we are first indicted by a grand jury and we are entitled to a speedy and a public trial by an impartial jury. The accused has a right to confront the witnesses against him, and he can force witnesses who could aid his case to testify. Of course, he cannot be made to testify against himself. He is entitled to the help of a lawyer, and he cannot be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. These are definitions in our Dictionary of Freedom. Smoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The script was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with editorial supervision by John Meston. The music was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns were by Ray Kemper and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. George Walsh speaking. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gun Smoke. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.